Hey, Dan, how are you? I'm all right. I'm all right, Rain. How are you? Good, good. Dan, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, today joining us is Daniel Solis, the Head of Performance and Reward from the Westpac Group. Uh, Dan's got multiple years of experience in his niche. And rather than me telling you all about uh, how Dan, how awesome Dan is and his achievements, I'll, I'll, let, I'll give Dan the floor. So Dan, if you could tell us a little bit about your background, your expertise, your career journey, short snippets and what's kept you in your niche. Yeah, sure, Rain. So, um, so my background is on um, analytics. So graduated out of uni with an economics and a HR degree. Um, and uh, I started in a role um, in the Insurance Australia group on the quant side. Um, and very quickly, I realized, you know, um, sitting in front of models um, and Excel spreadsheets all day wasn't for me. So I managed um, to land a role in, in the human resources function. Um, looking after, you know, analytics uh, on the analytics side. Um, so measuring absenteeism, turnover, or people resigning, um, and looking at all the numbers side to HR. Um, and from there, my journey kind of brought me into the performance and analytics space or REM and analytics, because uh, mm -hmm. that's the obvious um, numbers side of the HR function. Um, my journey has taken me through, you know, various different roles um, from um, sales plan design. Um, so understanding what drives performance in an organization and how we reward people for that performance. Uh, looking at, you know, executive pay um, and working through, um, you know, long term incentives for, you know, our most senior employees. Um, but also looking at, you know, the, the bottom level um, mm. of the organization um, where you've got, you know, um, customer service staff and sales staff and, um, yeah, that, and how, we're, how we're rewarding them. The um, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and how things are all connected together. Mm -hmm. um, my journey's taken me from Australia and Westpac and I've worked at Lloyd's in London, um, the cooperative group, and then back to Westpac. Um, and currently I look after the reward for um, the consumer and business division um, in the Westpac group. And what keeps you in the space? I mean, what, uh, what, what excites you to go to work every morning? Um, I'd like to think it's the, uh, the various different challenges that are put up. Um, from, a, from a simple perspective, um, paying someone reward or remuneration mm. is a very simple um, piece where you're dealing with three pieces of information. You find out what their base salary is, you find out what their bonus salary is and what their total salary is, right? Um, and for, the, for everyone, that is very simple. I think what, what drives me is actually working through um, all those different variations and, you know, those different levels of fixed and bonuses for the, for the type of work someone does. Mm -hmm. But also, um, I think it's understanding business and organizations and where um, the revenue is generating and how to appropriately reward someone for that um, revenue or what they bring into the organization. That could be financial and that could be non-financial as well. Daniel, it'll be really great to get some insight. I mean, you know, you've got years of experience. You've got uh, massive, um, you, you're, I would call, you, call yourself a sector specialist and you're you know, a niche in, in, your, in, in your line of work. You're leading teams uh, and, you, and I've seen you grow in, in the space that you're in. So it, it's, it'll be just amazing for our uh, following to learn a little bit more about what you've seen as, uh, massive trends over the last 12 to 18 months. I mean, there's been, I mean, each, each, each niche, each um, 
um, leader that we're speaking with are talking uh, are talking through trends and shifts that they've seen in their in, in their in you know in in their space of mm -hmm. influence uh, or their niche. So it'd be really good to understand from your perspective what's been the massive um, you know shift yeah. that you've seen. Because I mean, I think um, just that perspective with all your years of experience. I mean, what, what do you, has there been a shift or has it you know? What, just really good to great great to get some insight there yeah i think it um i think there's two big factors that have been um in play over the last uh, 18 months looking yes. at the calendar to say um the big one you know and it's no secret is um obviously the the pandemic that we're currently going through um and that's you know um that's made organizations focus um more on digital and how we can get things done through more digital aspects. So, you know, um, from a from a personal perspective, we're doing this interview over, you know, Zoom or Teams, right? Um, and me and my team have had to, you know, work through those aspects, and it's like mm. like every other team. Um, but as you as you think about the industry in general and banking, um, mm. there's been, you know, um, more and more. Um, I guess, uh, views on how we get things done digitally. Mm -hmm. um, so like an overall aspect um, is, you know, whether or not we can use telephone calls to, to service our customers rather than, you know, in branch type type mm -hmm. things. Um, I mean, and there are customers all over, um, you know, whether that's, you know, Westpac or anywhere. Um, there are customers all over, you um, uh, that that are used to dealing with things face to face, um, and I think I would say one of the key is can we do things more virtually digitally? Mm -hmm. um, the second the, the second big one I would say is um, in financial services. There's been a lot more regulation in mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. um, we've obviously three years ago uh, we went through the. Pain Royal Commission, mm -hmm. and since then we've had numerous amounts of regulation, um, you know, and and reviews done on on um, especially how we're selling. Uh, when I was in the UK, there was this whole concept of miss selling in financial services, where um, where uh, bankers would sell products to people um, that they didn't really need. And the and and as you if you it's kind of the layers of the onion peeling back. But as you go back, um, if if an organization is rewarding someone for a certain sale, the salesperson will um, then push that sale, you know, onto the customer, and mm -hmm. then they will get paid for it. So if you start going backwards, it all begins with what you're incentivizing someone for. Mm -hmm. So we've we've had to um, look at. Um, over the last, you know, few years, um, the, the the key pieces of information that we're selling for, um, or we're rewarding for, um, and then work through what is important for us and our customers, right? Um, and what we have found is, in a lot of instances, um, we've had to amend that to bring more the financial and the non-financial pieces through. So have a holistic view of what performance is, but also reward for behaviors as well. Right. So, okay. so that's just not, Hey, you made, you made a sale. It's you made a sale, how you made the sale is equally as important as to what you did. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and reward people for, for that, you know, below the line customer service aspect as well. I mean, it'd be really good to understand from, from your level of expertise in your yeah. niche, is there anything you think can add value to? Yeah, I, I think the main sales bit professionals. I, yeah, I think the main bit, Raina, I would, I would be probably focused in on is there's a lot of noise in the industry around mm. sales professionals at the moment. Um, and a lot of the old sales practices that have historically been, which is, hey, um, let's meet for a coffee. You can't do that anymore. Mm. Um, so 
um, the key learning is what are the channels that you can utilize through, you know, digitally or virtually to ensure that you connect in with your customer. Um, I think that would be the first thing. And I think the second thing is as, as more data is available out there in mm -hmm. the in the in the general market about people um my, my key learning and my key view is um as long as people understand what they are purchasing as a salesperson um and it is fit for purpose it's making sure that you've got all of that that eth ethical aspect and people understand what they are buying up front yeah they call it data-centric selling right i mean i think that's becoming massive yeah, it's become okay. such a growth area, you know, data centric, customer centric. So there's this, there's all these training. Yeah, and, and and I'm finding more and more decisions are being made for what we call database decisioning, right? Mm. So it's going to become more and more prominent where individuals have data, have models, and you know they understand what they want to buy because there's so much more information out there. So as a, as a sales professional, I'd encourage people to, you know, understand that as well to ensure that mm. they, 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 their customers and themselves understand what, what's on offer. Spot on. I think that was really insightful because, I mean, it's great to see professionals, leaders, experts in various sectors and how they perceive things. And, you know, and, it's, and, and, and data, data modeling is becoming such an um, mm. important piece uh, I mean, you're so right. You're spot on when it comes to database decisions. I mean, that that's becoming a big piece. And I think that that probably is a big shift. Mm. That's right. I would definitely agree with that.